Where we're talking about something uh, very interesting. We have a series that we have going all week long, and uh, this one of our favorite things. Many restaurants are super selective about the food they serve. And during our recent trip to Traverse City, we found a place very much like that, focusing on farm fresh food prepared in a unique way. It's a restaurant that embraces the farm to table concept wholeheartedly. Get this. Mm -hmm. They don't just serve fabulous food, they're located in one of the most gorgeous places in the state. And today we are taking you to Boathouse Restaurant. We all love wonderful food and drinks. How about enjoying your meal along the beautiful West Grand Traverse Bay? That's pretty special, but it's not the only unique thing about Boathouse Restaurant. We're gonna delve more into the food that's served here. Let's learn a little bit more. Doug's the owner of Boathouse Restaurant. So tell us about the farm to table movement that you embrace here. Well, um, it started out very small with just growing um, herbs in my mm -hmm. garden. It was a slow evolution. You know, like I said, it started with an herb garden, then it was a few turkeys, then it was a pig and a couple more turkeys. And <laughs> um, I originally tore out all my apple trees thinking I was gonna plant grapes. And um, there's plenty of grapes up here for everybody. So I'm like, sure. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go in the farm to table approach and, and do more stuff that I can use here um, and incorporate in, in my dishes. So things served here are very fresh. Take a look at some of the food before us. Doug, why don't you tell us This what we uh, have is here. a pumpkin bisque. So uh, pumpkins are in full bloom right now at, mm -hmm. at the farm. Um, and this excellent dish, it could almost be dessert. It's got that little bit I of bet. sweet, yeah, you know, some cream in there and cinnamon and it tastes wonderful. And then um, nothing fancy but always great this time of year, caprese salad mm -hmm. with some heirloom tomatoes and fresh mozzarella and, and a little basil. You've been open for close to 10 years now and what do you think has been the reason for your success? Because people still talk about Boathouse, they love coming here, they love a lot of things about this. Yeah, um, a variety of reasons, you know, the view and the drive up the peninsula and the water and there's a lot to do out here and it's so beautiful with wineries. Um, the food movement in general in Traverse City. Mm -hmm. um, so many other restaurants, uh, Trattoria Stella, Amical, Cook's House have embraced the food to table or farm to table program and, and they have done a lot with it that has helped build the food scene. And then, you know, my own program that I have here, which I have the view and the farm to table program. So I think a combination of all those things has helped build the success over the years. Well, you've talked so much about the cool farm. May we actually go see we it? We can show go over viewers? there. Yes, let's go check it out. We're only a half mile away, and it's interesting to see where it all comes from. Yeah, certainly the dishes we had at the restaurant, the pumpkin bisque and the heirloom tomato salad, and everything's in full bloom right now, so it's easy to uh, try to incorporate some of those things into what we're doing at the restaurant. And you have so many different types of tomatoes, and you've got your pumpkin patch here. And of course, we're in this beautiful orchard. Is it a challenge to incorporate the food here on the farm into dishes that that you serve at Boathouse Restaurant? Yes, uh, you have to be creative, you have to find a lot of outlets for it because when things bloom, it's it's everything at once, and so right. you need to find uh, you know how to use them, how to incorporate them. Um, the tomatoes, we do use a tomato water and ahi tuna dish. We use tomato jam mm -hmm. on top of our steaks, so we're always trying to find creative outlets that are still good, but creative in using everything that we have here. And that's good for your customers, yeah. too. Yep. Of course, variety is extremely important in what you do. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, you know, aside from fruit and vegetables, we need to have protein and meat as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I grow all my own turkeys for Thanksgiving. The boathouse is open on Thanksgiving Day, right. which we do um, a lot of people coming in for dinner. And we raise all the turkeys here and provide them for Thanksgiving dinner. That's wonderful, but turkeys aren't the only thing. Not the only thing. We also raise pigs as well. Mm -hmm. um, and usually we get all these animals in spring, early summer. And uh, obviously turkeys are ready at Thanksgiving and the <laughs> pigs are ready shortly thereafter. Yeah, well thank you so much, Doug, for letting us look around <laughs> both operations. Thank you. Yeah, you have a unique thing going on. We are talking about the Boathouse restaurant, the restaurant itself, and the farm where all the food comes from. Check it out. Okay, did it make you a little sad thinking, hey, I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> <laughs>
You can't think that way. I you got to think fresh, local. Okay, there you go. I know. I, yes. know. I have so many far friends who live on farms. I said, do you ever get sad? They're like, no, you don't think about it that way. You think yeah. about the, you know, the, the, the food cycle, and it's the freshest possible. That's yeah. why it tastes so it's good. It's where it all comes from, uh -huh. and so you want it to be fresh. In fact, a half mile down the road, in the case of Boathouse Restaurant, this operation is really impressive. It's so refreshing to know that some restaurants care so much mm -hmm. about the quality of the food they serve and how it tastes and I think when you have restaurants doing that it elevates the whole bar so that whole area really has stepped up to the plate and there's some fine fine restaurants oh yeah everybody's expectations there. are so much higher when mm -hmm. you get the flavor that comes along with the freshness there as Doug mentioned of course there's a great food scene in Traverse City so if you'd like to tour some of those great restaurants during a visit there get in touch with the folks at the Traverse City Tourism Department will put in their number and website at woodtv.com. You should also know there's a cool event coming up next month, November 30th, that will appeal to foodies. It's the great macaroni and cheese bake-off involving the wineries of Old Mission Peninsula. Chefs will turn the classic comfort food dish into culinary marvels, and then of course, pair it with wines from the area. Of course, we're talking about the Riesling, the Pinot Grigios, the Chardonnays. Wow. Rachel, what, what was that date again? <laughs> the 30th. The 30th. And, that and sounds amazing. The Trevor City wow. Tourism say it sells out fast. I'm and sure. So, please, if you want to do this, call right away. <laughs> Tomorrow on 8 West, we're showing you more of Old Mission Peninsula and a story that focuses on antiquing. We found a wonderful old antiques barn there full of treasures. Then we're heading to downtown Traverse City to another shop that has four floors of unique items, a place you could get lost for hours yeah. and have a great adventure. You know, they've really done such a great job in making themselves a year-round destination with mm -hmm. something really for everyone. Yes, it's very busy there in the summertime. Fall is ideal because some of those crowds are gone and you really get that local flavor mm. and the beauty of what's happening outside too mm -hmm. with the changing of the colors. And the changes also. of the seasons coming up into the winter season. Mm -hmm. A wonderful place to visit. Definitely. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. We will be right back. Don't go away. Your all access pass to everything West Michigan.